Aided by state-of-the-art surveillance technology, Finch and Reese paired up to prevent violent crimes using their own brand of vigilante justice. Catch up on Person of Interest with this season recap. When you find that one person who connects you to the world and is taken from you, what do you become then? You guys, Prince, were found in half a dozen crime scenes over the years. I've got eight case files connected to this guy's prints, and half of them have been redacted. This one's above your pay grade, Carter. Don't worry, I'm not going to tell anybody about you. You don't know anything about me. I know exactly everything about you, Mr. Reese. When the towers came down, the government gave itself the power to read every email, listen to every cell phone, but they needed something that could sort through it all. So when they finally got a system that worked, they kept it secret. So how do you know about it? I built it. I'm looking to that period when Dad shut down operations at the company. Obviously, he was celebrating something, but what? A machine? The machine? I wouldn't know. So this is everyone. Looking for people that are hiding something. People like you, in other words. The machine doesn't understand the difference between those crimes that are relevant to national security and the ones that are irrelevant. And the irrelevant information. Every night at midnight, the machine erases it. How are we supposed to live with this, knowing that someone out there needs help? I built myself a back door into it to access the irrelevant list. Just a social security number. That's all we get. I can't see the whole picture. I offered you a job, Mr. Reese. Never said it would be easy. Who the hell are you? Concerned third party? <laughs> I'm gonna need someone on the inside. Ah, so I'm working for you now, huh? That's right. <laughs> you just transfer? Dr. Fosco. Carter, a man I'm investigating broke into the evidence lockup a few weeks ago. He and his crew stole the contents of the evidence box. During the robbery, did you hear any of the men say the name Elias? Who's Elias? Double tap, close range, this was an execution. We got ourselves a witness. You're in danger. The men from the bodega are here. I know a detective we can trust. Get out! You honestly think we go to all this trouble for a witness? The shooters were looking for you. Yeah, the benefits of no one knowing who you are or what you look like. Elias, if you kill him. Ah! Brighton Beach belongs to me now. Well, whose number came on? Mutual friend of ours. Elias wants her gone today. We got into this to stop bad things from happening to good people. Carter's been doing that her whole life. You should know, you're not alone. Thank you for saving my life. You're welcome. The man you're chasing, he's dangerous. Do you even know him? Yeah, I was his best friend. And why do you want him so bad? Because he used to kill people for his country. Now he just kills them. Kara Stanton, the CIA handler, an old routine. Like I told you, you never go back. He killed her, then disappeared. We thought he was dead. We want to bring him back in before he kills anyone else. I had no idea what Snow was capable of. That he'd actually try to kill you. You know, I was really surprised he was able to slip away. Just can't figure out how he did it. Threatening a police officer? is against the law, Mr. Snow. So was lying to a federal agent. We didn't hack in, we were let in. They're using a worm to infect any devices connected to our private network. They're listening to us right now. Destroy your phone. Hold out, Carter. What is it, Lionel? Carter's up to something. You need to watch your ass. Well, I appreciate your concern about my ass, Lionel. I'm not sure that keeping both of our detectives in the dark is the best course of action. This guy spent so much time being someone else, he probably doesn't know who he is anymore. You know, Lionel, you could have been a good cop if not for a few bad choices. You've got me snooping around your boss, but I make bad choices? He signed a contract with the government for one dollar. For what? I don't know. Just said services. Let it go, Bill. It sounds just like my Uncle Harold. Who's he? My dad's best friend, Harold Wren. Are you sure you two never met? No. We haven't. I have to go. I'm sorry I couldn't be more help. I waited for you. I didn't ask you to. You just left. 
because you thought you'd get killed over there and that that would hurt me. But I think the truth is it was easier for you to be alone. In the end, we're all alone.